a couple of hours before our most recent Print Fix Friday went live, where I talk all about the bamboo blunder where bamboo printers started printing on their own, they actually released an update. It ain't bad. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and if you're new here, and if you like this kind of thing, make sure to leave a like and get subscribed. It costs you nothing, helps the channel grow. We're going to be talking all about the most recent updates surrounding the August 15th, 2023 Bamboo Cloud Outage that, when it did come back online, resulted in multiple users having their printers start prints. Some of these actually starting on top of already printing parts causing pretty bad damage to quite a few printers i give credit where it's due bamboo has a great solution for this asterisk because there's always a caveat so we actually now have a real update from bamboo and they try to give us a little bit more information. Unfortunately, it's kind of more of the same and not in a good way. We see that the root cause of the issue was related to the MQTT SDK used in the cloud connection. One of these two clients was disconnected due to a timeout. Usually the service will automatically restore that connection, but in this particular case, the service returned a successful connection report when in reality, the connection itself was not Reestablish, and during that time, a number of print start messages accumulated. This makes sense. So this is a checks and balances thing when it comes to dealing with SDKs. Now, I'd be curious to know where the SDK comes from. It is somewhat theorized that Bamboo is using a lot of open source stuff inside of their machine, but are clouding it around the closed source mentality. And if they are using an open MQTT protocol, it would be something that we have to know about because open source being what it is, hooray. There should be a check here that validates whether or not that connection was actually reestablished. Now, again, this probably doesn't happen all that often, but this is not the first major issue that we've seen with Bamboo Lab printers related to MQTT. And in fact, there's some really cool screens going around right now that involve some trickery utilizing the MQTT protocol, which give the P-Series Bamboo users an actual touchscreen and a better user interface, similar to what is experienced on the X1 series, which in my opinion, that entire UI UX is worth the extra price from the P1 to the X1 series, in my personal opinion. We can see that a second connection failure was detected and the service managed to reconnect successfully that time, but the result was the system sending the accumulated print start messages to the number of printers that received the information and started printing if the printer is idle. Now, this is an odd one to me because I'm running older firmware because I cannot update my bamboo. There is no way currently for any bamboo user to update their printer if they do not connect their printer to the cloud, which I'm not doing, and I recommend that others don't do it either because uh, you don't have this problem if you don't connect it to the cloud. So at least there's that. Minimally, at least keep it to LAN only mode, I guess. But when my printer starts, it always does that booping procedure where the nozzle goes through, it does, uh, you know, the bed moves up and down for vibration control, and it checks the piezoelectric bed leveling sensors that it has sitting underneath the bed. And I don't understand why the printer wouldn't have triggered some sort of failure on these because there's obviously something in the way. There was one time where my machine triggered it, and it was because I was cleaning off the bed when it had started the print. I didn't realize I was that close to the print starting. I had sprayed the bed, I was cleaning it off, and just the pressure from my hand was enough for it to trigger saying, hey, something's wrong, we're canceling the print. So I don't know why those safety measures either aren't available in newer firmware or are somehow bypassed because of this print queue feature. Whether or not the printer is empty, it should still be checking it, be it from a camera module to see, hey, is there something in the way? Or two, when the entire printer goes through and actually checks to see if there's anything on the bed. In most of the cases that we saw of the printers printing randomly, it was either 
it didn't work, they went to bed, and then they woke up to their printer running, or in other cases where it printed the same file on top of an already printed file, or even canceled or failed out jobs that were currently running. I don't understand why all these fancy technology, like the LiDAR sensor, like the camera, like the AI fail detection, would not have caught this sooner. Anyways, and there was another unfortunate issue that contributed to the problem. The large number of API access requests done in the same time have impacted the API service, which did not allow it to respond in a timely manner. Bamboo Studio has a logic implemented to reinitiate a print request immediately after accessing the cloud, and this has increased the accumulation of API access calls, which exceeded the API service capacity. Now. This one is an odd one to me, because if you are running a cloud service, you know how many printers are connected to that cloud. You have an idea of when your uptimes and downtimes are going to be. You, you know you can track how many API calls you're getting, when and where you're getting them. And if you are running that lean, that you're trying to run your API service capacity right at that limit, I'm a little worried for why that's occurring versus how are we able to solve it. But thankfully, Bamboo does actually have a path to solve it. So the ones equipped with LiDAR, the current X1 series will receive a new firmware feature for those that are connected to the cloud because those of us that are connected to the cloud don't get firmware updates that will allow it to check if the printer has printed models that have not been removed from the build plate. The printer will perform this verification before every print and if it detects a problem, the user will be prompted with a message on the screen. Bamboo Studio and Bamboo Hand to request user intervention and confirmation. I like this, but I don't think this actually requires a firmware update. If anything, it requires some G code being run in the start sequence. And maybe that's what they're doing instead. Instead of putting it as custom G code in the start sequence inside of Bamboo Studio, they're going to do it in terms of the custom G code start sequence for the printer itself, right? The stuff that we can't see that is just the, hey, go do your calibration as normal. So I can't hate that, but it feels like the technology is already there. This is a very reactionary response. And it's like, wait a minute, you've had this ability to do this. Did you just hope that it wouldn't happen? or what i don't believe that bamboo was being malicious here right this response is and you'll see truly one of the best possible responses to a scenario like this however this scenario was 100 percent preventable if these features that require nothing more than firmware were done in the beginning. And while I will also praise Bamboo in the fact that they have released an update this quickly with an actual result of what happened and a way they're going to fix it with a full path on how it's going to be done, I also have to dock the points and say this should have been done in the beginning, right? It's like, you did good, you did really good, but you turned it in late. So you're not gonna get a perfect score on this one. So printers without LiDAR will display that reminder about the needing to clean the plate before starting a print, asking for the customer to interact with the message to confirm the operation has been done. This message will be displayed on the screen in Bamboo Studio and Bamboo Handy. Now, the thing we don't currently know yet is if you have to click it on all three, on just one, do you must interact with the printer or can you just do it from Bamboo Studio or even from Orca Slicer if that's potentially a thing. And we can see that their printers will have the option to enable or disable this feature in the printer settings, but the default option will be for the function to be enabled. I like this, but I'm worried that this will cause potential problems in the future if this problem happens again and users have disabled this function, right? Because Bamboo will say, we gave you the opportunity, you decided not to use it, this one's not on us anymore, get wrecked scrub. But maybe they won't. So far, Bamboo's response is to their their problems have kind of surprised me. One, it's more transparency than I expect from a company that deliberately obfuscates pretty much all the data coming off of their machine. So it's like, clearly their marketing department and their encryption department are two completely separate departments that don't talk to each other because the encryption department would likely have a problem with all of this. But I do think this is at least better than nothing, right? This is good, but I want more. And maybe that's just because I'm curious, you know? I wanna know.
And we can see they're looking at increasing the security and safety of the printer, which will be applied on all of their printers. And it is to continuously monitor the hot end and heat bed temperature. If a fault is detected, an error message will be prompted on the printer screen, Bamboo Studio and Bamboo Handy to alert the user and avoid potential hazards. Of course, the heaters will be turned off to further minimize any potential risk. So this appears to be something along the lines of just further control for a thermal runaway issue. I don't know if people were ever alerted inside of Bamboo Studio or, or Bamboo Handy. I don't remember checking this when I had my printer connected to Bamboo Studio, but you know, I can't hate that. I think that's great. I'm glad they're doing that. And uh, I will not benefit from that at all because I can't connect my printer. But those that do, this is where connected printers start to shine. Even when the machine is off, now, let's put our tinfoil hats on for a second. This is giving Bamboo one more level of data collection that they can do. If we know they are continuously monitoring hot end and heat bed temperatures, they can detect when and where people are. Utilizing the camera and the temperature, we can figure out if people are inside of a house. I don't think there's anything nefarious here. I think that this is just more of a correlation doesn't equal causation problem. But man, if there's a script kitty out there that can find a way to get into that MQTT protocol and be able to communicate directly with the printers, you would be able to figure out not only people's schedules for coming and leaving, you could figure out their schedules, how their air conditioning runs when they go out of town. There's a lot of data that can be collected now that we have sensors that can collect humidity, because that's already a thing that exists inside the machine. AMS has humidity sensors. We have sensors now for temperature that are going to be logging constantly. And we have the camera capability that, you know, if you're using a P1P that doesn't have an enclosure, you now have access to see what's going on around the printer as well. Again, very tinfoil hat. Correlation does not equal causation. So let's remove that here for a second and get back to the actual discussion hand. So we can see they're also making significant improvements to their cloud printing logic to ensure that every time a print is initiated, the printer will check the timestamp and automatically discard any outdated print, which does not follow their strict configuration. This has apparently already been implemented on the servers, but it will require additional features added in the firmware too. Why was this not added? This could have immediately stopped this problem. And outside of having an outage, users would have just had an outage and I would not have even talked about it. An outage on a cloud, that's not that big of a deal, right? It's not even worthy of Print Fix Friday these days because the solution requires some sort of transparency. I'm glad we're getting it, but I feel like this should have been here to begin with. We can see that additional LAN mode functionality will also be implemented in future firmware updates to further increase security and capabilities of the system. File management and media download functionality will be implemented while user certificate authentication for connectivity will be available to ensure secure connections in shared network environments. I do like that, but uh, I think we will have to get someone with some penetration testing experience to validate what that secure connection actually looks like. It would be nice if you wanted to put this in some sort of, whether it's a school or an office environment or an engineering company that doesn't do NDA stuff for some reason, where you couldn't just have some random dude in IT trolling the engineering department randomly by printing benches or, you know, other things uh, on the printer because they can connect to it, but instead have a secure connection, which would be a point to point connection or peer to peer connection, rather than something that just kind of sits openly on a network. We've talked about this before, where having a machine openly on a LAN network, even if it is not connected to the outside world and just in LAN only, still poses a problem if the machine itself has some ability to be a pathway for a bad actor to get through. Or, you know, if you have friends that are jerks that drive up to your house, start printing something randomly on your bamboo and then drive away. If they have access to your local network via your Wi-Fi connection, they theoretically have the ability to do this as well. As dumb as that sounds, it is a possibility. And while I don't necessarily believe it's going to be a big one, we've seen enough issues with people controlling televisions at places like Walmart and inside of office buildings that I can only imagine what would happen if someone had access to be able to control a 3D printer that didn't initially belong to them. So when will this happen? 
Uh, we can sum this entire thing up as the industry standard soon, TM. This is going to take time, and anybody that looks at this that understands the kind of network architecture that they have to do to change, yeah, it's going to take some time. This is not going to be an overnight thing, but obviously Bamboo's got some egg on their face right now that they're cleaning up. And I will give them credit. This is way more information than I expected. So Bamboo, good job. I appreciate this level of transparency, but for the love of all things that is holy, let me see what's in those gosh darn log files because I hate not being able to update my printer. It's stupid. You know it's stupid. Can we all just agree to stop making it encrypted? That would literally make 90% of my pain go away with that machine. Just saying. So we can see that it will take some time. Some of the updates are already on their list of features to work on. And of course, that means they've now been brought to the first place in line. And we can see on the cloud server side, some of the changes have already been implemented to mitigate any potential issues. The SDK service logic has been updated and we have increased the database connection sizes for better throughput. This is something that anyone that runs a cloud-based business understands. You must have a network that can expand and contract with your needs. Last I checked, Bamboo is AWS backed and AWS does allow this. So it should just be as simple as turning on that ability so that their server needs and space can expand and then contract as their needs change. This is pretty normal for this level of server architecture. However, it doesn't appear that they were doing it. They might have done a more manual approach, and this would be common in a company that is trying to save some cash where they don't want to expand it too early and pay extra money if they know, ah, eh, we're going to get to 99%, but we're not going to hit 100 versus when you hit 85%, it you know, would expand to now have up to 130 or 120% capacity. So you're never really kissing that 90% mark. Bamboo is doing something to make it right. Me personally, it's not enough, but it's something, but it's going to be a problem. All of our customers who have suffered hardware failures due to our cloud outage will receive assistance to repair the printers if required and bring them to the initial state in the shortest amount of time possible. Bless the souls that are working in Bamboo customer support. And by the way, um, I had a camera issue and I posted about it on Twitter to make sure whether it was a wire, potentially a camera, we got down to it's most likely the CCD having some wiring issues, which is the actual like camera sensor and uh i already have the camera sensor in hand sometimes bamboo service is great other times it's terrible that's what i don't like about it like i had a good experience this time and it's like well did i just have a really crappy person previously was just someone that felt i was personally attacking them it's like that was a really good experience the previous ones have not been so maybe they are doing a good job of changing things maybe i should reopen that old ticket i don't know let me know what you guys think in those comments below. We can see the spare parts will be provided to replace the damaged ones and spools of filament will be provided to compensate for wasted filament generated by the printer. Okay, right? That's not bad. We're not going to be compensating for people's time, but Bamboo says, you know, anyone who had a printer damage, they'll get two spools of randomly selected PLA filament as compensation for the trouble that this has caused. And unfortunately, already Bamboo users are attempting to deal with this. Uh, we had a couple of people comment on the Friday video saying, hey, you use my images. And in fact, people have been using those images to try to get free filament and free parts from Bamboo, which has now required me, that person, to do more work to prove that it is actually my issue and not an issue from somebody else. And shame on the community for that. It's where the level of transparency might not have needed to include that, right? It's nice to see it, but it just means that people are going to take advantage of it. And some people say, F them, you know, take advantage of it, do whatever. Me, I'm, I prefer responsible stewardship and say, hey, this is really for people that need it. Don't be that person because you would be mad if you actually had a problem and you didn't get something because of someone who didn't have a problem actually abused the system and made it impossible for you to get the service that you wanted. Where does all of this leave me? As I said in the Friday video, which was me holding my, my phone right at the end of the video, this is a good response. And in fact, talking with network security professionals, they said this is 
probably one of the best responses that you could get given the situation. And certainly given what we expect from the company, this is way more than we expected. So kudos to Bamboo on that. I am very happy to see this level of transparency and I hope that we continue to see it. It is something that I've always appreciated from competitors of Bamboo, specifically the one most of you think I'm a massive fanboy of and get paid for, Prusha. I like how responsive, how open, how apparently honest, or at least it feels honest to me, and transparent that Purusha is, it's nice to see another company do it. And I actually talked about this previously where Bamboo was really open about something that I didn't expect. So kudos to you guys, keep up that side of things. Please unlock your freaking log files because gosh, I want to be able to see what's inside of them. Anyways, but I believe this is a good answer to a problem that should have never existed because all of this is preventable. And this to me is what happens when people rush to get things done. Bamboo, I think, did not really understand the level of popularity their printers were going to get and a lot of their architecture in terms of their network security and network size and sustainability was not really done well. We saw lots of issues with cloud outages in the early days, and we've certainly seen more issues regarding the MQTT SDK protocol that is being used. This is not the first time the MQTT system has been the subject of issues with bamboo printers. And I would say that it's now time to get ahead of things, Bamboo, and look to be more proactive rather than reactive. Because as a user and as someone who is probably way too skeptical for their own good, you know, just being honest, I worry that if the behavior doesn't change, the problems have continually gotten worse. And the next one could be much worse than this and cause issues, including loss of property or even loss of life. And nobody wants to see that happen. But I will say for what my expectations were, this exceeds them heavily. So good job, Bamboo. I wanna see more stuff like this. What do you guys think in those comments below? Let me know because I really wanna talk more about this. I know a lot of you like when we dig into some of these systems and why. So if you do want to talk about this more, we can maybe look at getting a network security professional on the podcast and dive more into what MQTT actually is, why it matters, and why this is a recurring problem for companies like Bamboo. If you guys want to see it, let me know. But that's all I have for you all today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always... Keep making awesome. Have a good one. And that's when you do. I want to know. Can you show me? I think. I want to say that's Peter Gabriel. Am I right? It's Phil Collins. F All right. Well, okay. I I'm not. I'm not. No, I'm wrong. It's fine. It's Phil Collins. I should have known that. I'm upset about that. Damn it. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure to leave a like and hey, get subscribed if you made it this far. Right next to me is our channel supporters at the $5 tier and higher. Remember, if you want to join them, you could do so in those links in that description down below for as little as $1 a month. But thank you to those of you that do financially support the channel that make videos like this possible multiple times a week. Right below me will be our entire playlist on Bamboo where you can see some trials and tribulations, to say the least, about my uh, somewhat complicated relationship with Bamboo Lab. And right next to that will be the Print Fix Friday episode 101, where we talk all about this issue to begin with. I'll see you all down in those comments and in the next one. Take care.